Hello, and welcome to the Edification channel. This video is about Oth and his many identities, and how he relates to all mankind. This is based on an article by Dan Winter. April 2000 from Implosion Group website. Thoth served to enlighten humans in that age, that they were not the spawn of the Nephilim, the fallen angels of Lucifer. He revealed to them that, although the fallen lords had greatly tampered with their mortal bodies through eons of genetic manipulation, humankind were still angels unaware. Talk about all done with mirrors, remember what they said about the electron, there is only one, it just gets around, might be true of Thoth. Thoth is Burigelian Orionian, Thoth is the Illumined and Ochian Master, Thoth is Quasilcotl, Thoth is Hermes, Thoth is Enki's son, Thoth is Rasmus of Afra, Thoth is the Atlantean, Thoth is Dut, in other words Jesus Consciousness. Oth also built the pyramid, and started the colander. Superman changing capes, doesn't hold a candle to this fellow. But what have we learned about redeeming our gene pool? In addition to Simeon and Maya's detailed Temple Doors websites on Thoth, the Temple of Thoth, excerpted later, Thoth is also the stated author slash inspirator of today's modern Templar style mapping time fabric repair slash aratronic versus metatronic grid literature. We have long been trying to sort out the true intent behind the draconian and reptilian cultures from the Orion sector, involvement in cooking up our DNA, while particularly on this website, the Draco stories of horror have got in heavy press, in fact the simplistic notion that the Draco and Dragon roots are all man-eating and bloodthirsty, firefights under Dulls, is simply not true. Gardner does forget to give us Draco Dragon's misdeeds and downside, but he does at least remind us that maybe our DNA needed to have its royal, grail, families bred like show dogs for millennia. While it is true, that the fallen, or nephite portion of that, what I consider parallel to the Anunnaki, culture, have perpetrated some horrific deeds in their babysitting of us as a petri dish, some true physics behind the vampire myth for example. On the other hand some of the highest forms of potential psychokinetics, stein habiting, and faster than light DNA, seeds come to us precisely because we have been sown from such a potent, if sometimes literally god-awful, family tree. Thoth is or an educational case in point in this regard. Rarely do we compare specific detailed information which explains that he, also named Quetzalcoatl the subject of Tutankhamun prophecies, was the son of Enki, brother to Marduk slash Ra, thus clearly the pride of the human DNA defenders part of the Anunnaki fleet. And yet here, as clearly below, Thoth states unequivocally, that he is of Bururian slash Regelian descent. Putting these two notions together may give us new insight into the Anunnaki origins in the Orion sector, and why for example Thoth, as Hermes, built the pyramid complex as a golden spiral star map to Orion's belt stars, quote from El Dorado analysis of North American star maps. Dome and structures like Jesus pyramids, massive tuning symmetry with respect to orbital mechanics and charging bedding, Modulate planetary spin to stabilize them through gravity effects like planet lineups, and such things as severe orbital problem due to a glancing blow from a passing meteorite. This resulted in rapidly decaying orbit. See the ET origin of the experiment in interplanetary stabilization. Includes more on Thoth's role. Job 3831 Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades? or loose the bands of Orion, in Sitchin's calendar tales from when time began. He explains to us in great detail, that Oth taught the Moon Cycles based calendar, which under his other name Quetzalcoatl became the Mayan calendar, partly because it needed to compete with his archenemy brother R slash Marduk's solar based calendars. Seems like Jose Arguel's battle with the Pope has a precedent. The point here is the history of Thoth's origins gives us a major new clue. Reference Sitchin, Thoth was taught by his dad Enki, how to raise people from the dead. His brother Marduk slash Ra was not. 
another possible hint to his identity with the Jesus Smith. The resulting squabble led to Ra's booting Thoth out of Egypt, precipitating his Mesoamerican life as Quetzalcoatl, etc. What I find fascinating is if we combine Sitchin's detailed scholarship demonstrating Thoth is son of Enki, brother of Ra. And yet Oth self proclaims, below except, I am pure Aegean blood from Orion. So, we may be getting a little bigger picture of our Anunnaki gene poor planetary origins. The word origin is rooted in the word Orion. We have long speculated that Enki's dad on was of Orion blood, which the links here may confirm. On sons, Enki slash Adonai versus Enlil slash Valwa, squabble over whether or not to ensoul slash empower our gene pool, their experiment, became the root of almost every war in the history of our planet, including and especially, the Enlil nuclear blast desertifying Sinai, Enlil's treachery to destroy Enki's haven which was Atlantis slash Thule and especially the Cain slash Abel battle of brothers which is today labeled the Arab slash Israeli war. See Gardner scholarship Genesis of the Grail Kings, on Anki's babysitting of Cain slash Cain slash King, to begin the Grail bloodline. It would be natural for Thoth descending from the Enki side of the war of the brothers, Archerist of Eden, to inherit the Adonai slash Enki penchant for trying to slip some psychokinetic muscle into us as a DNA experiment. This is very consistent with the Andromedan rumor that the Syrian slash Orion trading house made by the Orion culture to build Nibiru for gene splicing was rebellious against the empire. As a result, he's more ingenious kids, Thoth, slip some Mickey into the N per hour, dash Ibiru genetic T. The Andromedans call this part Arl or 11th dimensional DNA. This becomes the word Ptah, in Egypt to some, Helios for example, believe is identical with the person left Hyperion. What may be more fascinating is why the Orn slash Orion trading house whose family became Thoth, wanted to rebel against the strict Orion Queen laws against spontaneous and psychokinetic, and unregulated DNA crossing. On the high side, if we are to believe in Anna Returns and Anna Hayes Voyages, later the Orionian Anunnaki were abashed and apologetic about starting the fractionation of a gene pool, here on Earth, without providing the stellar magnetic environment, to re-embed that bloodline back into Stein habiting, immortality, and Solarian, able to navigate magnetically slash shamanically through suns. To do this required millennia of planning, to get soul family groups back into the gravitic and familial pressures which could squirt them DNA-wise back into stars superluminally. Anna Hayes discusses this in detail in terms of DNA braids. This is what Gardner describes as the raising of the highwood firestone or Shem. Basically the symmetry of implosion dash familially, tectonically, architecturally, glandularly, genetically, CR Grail animation. Essentially in summary, if you split off a branch, science slash John, of a DNA familial, without the responsibility to provide a sacred temple format to reintegrate the memory of that bloodline back into Time Lord star families, then you get bad karma. Your hand gets slapped by some galactic board. In an Anna Returns this translates into the Anunnaki being told, by the Guardian Alliance, that their present kin are stuck back on earth till they help harvest redeem the whole errant gene pool they started, this becomes a fearsome task. What I propose here is we become more cognizant of what temple-like, well-star mapped, and astrologically embedded, practices and rites for family groups will get their bliss back into the star wormholes, personalitide. A story Michael Hellas once suggested is that the Orion Syndicate had driven rulership of Sirius, an anarchy outpost, produced resentment there. The politics of fear eventually bred a kind of rebellion inside the wealthy ear slash on trading house, Thoth's grandma. So the urge to slip some Mickey to the same Borg cult which had fostered the Orion Wars may have been brewing in Thoth's bloodline for some time. The combination of good gene splicing skills in Ia's family, 
combined with the good fortune of having Orion Investment in Nibiru as a gene splicing enterprise for gold, powder, mining on outpost Earth, may have been too tempting to resist some uprising. Anunnaki and Nibiru slash Hibiru being in many ways synonymous here, probably the heavy slash Hibiru, ones of the crossing over, may have held a bit of resentment in the way the genes were crossed over originally between reptilian and humanoid. The passion slash land empowered side of the family line takes the high side in the NG against Enlil brothers, and similarly in the Marduk slash Ra versus Oth brothers of the next generation. Interesting how the turgeon of sins, or yearnings, of the fathers visited on the soul directions of the sons. It took a fair amount of trickery to get such radically self-replicating DNA droids installed on the mining planet, without arousing too much suspicion on the home star. One interesting story was in the original story of Enoch. He was the pride of the DNA's droids of Enki's fleet. He was the one submitted back to the Orion Council, when they demanded a specimen of the result of the genetic experiments on Earth, after they learned that the Anunnaki had crossed in their own DNA. And that is how the story of Enoch slash scribe began with his epoch tale of travel to Orion star home, the word Hotak, author. Keys of Enoch, means light from Orion. This was all part of the Enki Thoth subterfuge against Enlil and later Marduk. And why Enki and Thoth had to start Atlantis slash Thor to hide Cain's kids. What I like is that eventually we, our gene pool, gets to be the bullet in the draconian furnace. Something Scorpio in me like Sting, the revolution against the Elizabeths continues, the archaeogeometry of America's spiritual destiny left parenthesis individuation versus new world order evolution, a microcosm of Galactic Orion was, a true to life Galactic sequel to The Empire Strikes Back. In any case, very early on Thoth, get something of a reputation for defending the naive DNA droids here, us, against the parasitism of his more vampiric, draconian, cousins. Pics of reptiles eating humans in Monument Valley at www.wilaw.com. If we are interpreting the Thoth myths properly, perhaps his education strategy still today put him at the forefront of those who would protect our genetic dignity in the face of galactic parasites quoted from a link below here. Thoth served to enlighten humans in that age, that they were not the spawn of the Nephilim, the fallen angels of Lucifer. He revealed to them that, although the fallen lords had greatly tampered with their mortal bodies through eons of genetic manipulation, humankind were still angels unaware. This whole plot gets much more thicker, if we take even slightly seriously Maurice Scott Arell's book Long Scholarship, Tutankhamun Prophecies, insisting that Tut was Quetzalcoatl, Thoth. Then, and I am not so sure of this, but find it important to point out, there are more than one whole book of scholarship insisting Tut was Jesus, House of the Messiah. So let's look the other names of Thoth, let's see. He is. Thoth Doth Masuridai came within a vesicle of light, a macabre of golden, and blue-white fire, from Rigel, through the Asafetas, the belt of Orion, and ascended unto Rastaru, Rasta, the etheric manifold of the plain of Giza. With me, I brought the Anochian table, from, the historical and mythical Thoth. Insert from Dan, not from Link. Now as I recall, Michael Ash, chief time empath of Montauk assured me personally, that the Regilian crew at Montauk, were some of the most arrogant, and heartless ET types to work with, however we probably should not generalize here. Working with Earth's primitives could probably try the patience of a king. Cain, Thoth the Atlantean race was of Afra, when I returned to Egypt. The priests of the great temple soar beyond my physical body, into the auric veil which surrounded my form, and they knew, that he who is the Tatet, the Tehuti, had returned. To those of my family and personal fold, I was known to them as Shansi, the beloved. Thoth, Toth, Tatet and Tehuti are all forms of the same root, which are titles meaning, one who gives breath to, or the grand communicator. 
Toth Mustard was known in Atlantis as the Sword of Orion. His origin is ultra-terrestrial, from the eighth sphere of heaven. He tells me that this denotes the dimension of his realm, which is the eighth. In that dimension he contains the genetics of the light traces of Orion with the son of his creation being Rigel, the Hierophant Thoth Amistrismestus. Thoth is known in mythos as a god of the Egyptians, later adopted by the Greeks and renamed Hummies. As a god being, he was venerated in Egypt from at least 3000 BCE. He was given credit for inventing hieroglyph writing. He was known as the scribe of the gods, and as such, was the recorder of all human deeds. It has also been said through the ages, that the great Oth brought to mankind the sciences of law, astrology, anatomy, medicine, chemistry, art, magic, alchemy, and architecture. There are certain learned scholars of the past who equated Thoth with the biblical prophet Enoch, saying that they were one and the same. E. M. Lichus declared Thoth to have been the author of 20,000 books, while Manetho credited him with having written more than 36,000. The Greeks called Thoth Amistris Magistus, the latter name meaning Thrace Great. The ancient Egyptians often depicted Thoth as ibis headed, although he was also portrayed at times with the head of a baboon. There are ancient texts which claim that Thoth was the architect of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The most famous books attributed to him are the Emerald Tablets and the Pymander. Thoth, the illumined Anachian master, Thoth served to enlighten humans in that age, that they were not the spawn of the Nephilim, the fallen angels of Lucifer. He revealed to them that, although the fallen lords had greatly tampered with their mortal bodies through yarns of genetic manipulation, humankind were still angels unaware. End quotes from Simeon and Meyer. This last note could be quite comforting, after noting some of the manipulative nature of the Mormon A. Barker, Moroni's intent, getting genetic immortality pure principles from angels and alphabets. In this regard, since we have been reviewing angelic, and E.T. intent, to reinvent our planetary genetic origins. In the process we do keep tripping over this Oth fellow. From the secrets of Thoth and the keys of Enoch The lost Anachian knowledge reveals the mother tongue as a language of light. Known to the ancients as Hiburu, it is the primal seed language, introduced at the beginning of this time cycle. Modern research confirms the most ancient form Hebrew to be a natural language, the alphabetic forms emerging from the phosphine flare patterns of the brain. The same shapes, in fact, born of a spinning vortex. It is a true language of light, coursing through our very nervous system, encoding the natural waveform geometries of the physical world. Hiburu is a harmonic language, mimicking the waveform properties of light. The keys Enoch speaks of, turn out to be sound keys, keys to be vibratory matrix of reality itself, the mythic power of the world. The Enochian knowledge describes sonic equations encoded within the ancient mantras and god names, capable of directly affect the nervous system and producing profound effect of healing and higher consciousness states, as the ancient texts declare, if you would speak with the gods you must first learn the language of the gods. To get more information about this and other true knowledge topics, go to trueknowledge.findinfoworld.com or click the link below. Thank you for watching.